Hey everybody, hunter, fisher, trapper, trader, guide, scout, and interpreter, and country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, and today we're going to do some catfish fillets, not whole catfish, but catfish fillets. <clears throat> now you can actually cut out the bloodline in these to make them taste a little better when you pan fry them, but another tip that you can do is cut these up in smaller catfish nuggets. Now you can buy them in nuggets, but I don't know, they just don't seem to have the same flavor. We'll chuck them in our little bowl over here. And again, that was one, but I'm going to show you. You can also trim the bloodline out of the middle of catfish. Tastes a little better if that bothers you. Go ahead and leave it out. But the main thing we're trying to emphasize here is we're going to cut this catfish in little pieces does two things. First of all, we're going to pour some buttermilk over these and let them soak. And then, when we put the breading on, the breading will get on the sides as well as on the main face and the back of the fillet. And it just seems to have better flavor. Catfish to me just seems to be a little on the oily side, unless it's, you know, farm raised obviously, but we got a couple more fillets to go here. Hope I'm not boring everybody. But we're going to cut this up. And when you put buttermilk on them, you don't have to do that, but a lot of people do. They soak it in buttermilk and it just kind of pulls some of the, the mud flavor out of them. Now I only cut that bloodline out of one because it doesn't really bother me, but if it bothers you, take that little dark strip out of the middle of your catfish fillets. Now that we got this trimmed up, and I'm just going to throw this in because I'm going to cook it anyway, we're going to take some buttermilk and pour over the top of our catfish here. You can put a little salt in this too if you want, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and now that we've got it all over our little catfish chunks, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to put it in the refrigerator and let it just kind of marinate in there for about, you know, six or eight hours or even overnight. And when we get done with this par portion of it, we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to pan fry this in my new best friend, which is a cast iron frying pan. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, we've had these catfish nuggets in the refrigerator for about eight hours. And this is a seasoning that Sheila and I worked on for two years. And a company up north called Fryin Saucer, F-R-Y-I-N Saucer.com will be coming out with it. And it's going to go in all the major stores. They actually bought the recipe from us. And we're pretty proud about that. We're going to put this catfish chunks in here. Just shake off the excess. And only put about two or three in at a time or maybe four or five, I've got kind of a bigger container here. Kind of tumble them around. Don't get too much fish in your breading because you want it to really coat nice without turning into a kind of a blob, you know what I'm saying? So there we go. We'll get these catfish nuggets ready to go in the pan. Now you can put these off to the side and put a few more in there. <clears throat> Excuse me, so it hits the seasoning without running back into the the other ones and over here is my newest best friend I got sick and tired of buying brand new frying pans and within about six months they're a bowl and rock around on the burner so I went back to the old school and if you look at this thermometer right here it's just rolling up on 350 degrees I got about an inch of oil in here and it's the old standard cast iron frying pan and I absolutely love it now 360 is the magic temperature that I like to go by. It's just going by 350 now, so it's close enough. And we're gonna lay these catfish chunks in here. She, she, if you'll get a shot of this. And because we took these catfish fillets and cut them up in little pieces, they're gonna be golden brown all the way around, and they turn out to be white and fluffy. Now, I can't say they're as tasty as crappies because I'm kind of crazy about crappie and bluegill and perch and stuff like that but if you really want to let me get a couple more over here if you really want to tone down 
the oiliness or the mushiness, that's the word I've been looking for, of catfish. Cut them in little one inch strips or inch and a half strips. Soak them in buttermilk for about six or eight hours or overnight, either one. Shake off the excess fish breading. And I'm telling you what, they're gonna turn out fantastic. Now we'll be back in a little bit after we get these turned and golden brown and put them on some paper towels. I'm just turning the last couple of these nuggets here and something I found out because I haven't cooked with cast iron frying pan believe it or not in my whole life as much as I like to cook I kind of shied away from them because everything used to stick but if you'll just wipe them out and leave a little oil in there all the time man they'll do eggs and sausage and everything great but you got to turn the burner down on a regular aluminum frying pan when I cook fish I pretty much got it wide open so when it hits 350 I put in the fish it kind of tones it down and I keep on doing batches of fish but you can't do that with this cast iron because that burner transfers heat so good that it goes right through and you'll burn up your pan you do have to turn these down to about if you got a stove that's like zero to seven or ten put it on about six or seven these are done and the key again to this is don't overcook fish and don't over rinse fish you notice when I cut that fish up I didn't run it under water in the sink for a long long time because it loses all of its flavor you want to leave the oils in your fish and I'm gonna turn this burner on I could have actually turned the burner off five minutes ago because it holds heat so well all right let me let these cool off for just a second and we're gonna come back and take a look at what we got well these have cooled down a little bit so let's take a kind of a close-up look at what we got here look at that nice and flaky and white not greasy or oily that's the key soak your catfish in buttermilk put it in your favorite breading put it in oil I use canola oil because it doesn't transfer flavors that's a whole nother show heat your pan up slowly and when you turn it off under no conditions stick it in the sink and, and run cold water on your frying pan just let it cool down until it's completely cooled down dispose of the grease in your grease container wipe it out and you really don't have to wash these now this is a lodge brand cast iron frying pan and they've got all the instructions on their site when you buy it or when you get one in a box they used to in the old days sell you cast iron frying pans and you had to season them yourself rub them down with oil put them in the oven bake them now they come pre-seasoned where they do it at the factory they dip it in oil and bake it dip in the oil and bake it so every time you cook with it it gets better and better and better but let it cool down until it's completely cold just wipe it out and don't use harsh detergents and stuff to scrub it or you're gonna have to season it again and grandma's probably got a frying pan over there she's cooked a thousand meals in or maybe two thousand but look at this catfish the finished product is absolutely white and flaky not mushy that's what Sheila and I are having for dinner tonight now why we were switching that we do have one more little batch over here with some more and uh, look at that golly that turns out nice just so flaky that uh, I can't stand it. We got a homemade tartar sauce recipe. If you go to our whole catfish uh, video on our on our channel, you'll see that too. Now the reason you don't see me today is because I'm standing here in a pair of old sweatpants and an old nasty t-shirt and Sheila's grinning at me because she won't go in a grocery store if her hair and makeup isn't perfect. So I'm not going on camera on this recipe because my hair and makeup is not perfect. So but anyway, I'm still looking good here with this great recipe. Give it a try. Pick up some catfish fillets, cube them up in those little strips, soak them in buttermilk overnight or six or eight hours. Just shake off the excess, throw it in the batter, and put it in your grease. Remember, 360 degrees when it hits 360 on your little th meat thermometer here. It's not a meat thermometer, it's actually an oil thermometer. The meat thermometers only go to about 180 some degrees. So you wanna make sure you get one at Bed Bath & Beyond or something that goes to 400. When it hits 360, take it out, throw in your fish, turn your burner back down to, to high medium, 
put your fish in only about two or three minutes on each side so it's golden brown take it out and don't be shy on the paper towels we put a ton of paper towels that also pulls some of the oil and grease away and your finished product is going to be nummy I'll bet you wish you were here having catfish with me so all right Sheila you can turn off the camera and that's our recipe don't forget to subscribe to our channel there's our our little banner at the bottom there and uh, click on it and check back often and, and when we get another recipe you'll be the first to know if you subscribe thanks a lot and uh, hope you enjoyed this recipe bye bye